welcome back to Messy Minds, where we come to unpack and declutter our thoughts. You're joined by your co-hosts, Jesse Chow and Mary Nguyen. Can you believe, Mary, that we are currently recording episode nine right now? Like, that is so fucking crazy. Feels like yesterday we were only recording, you know, episode one and releasing that and we're already on episode nine. Yeah, well, if this was a Netflix TV series, we'd be at the end of our, you know, first season. Can you believe it? Like... But unfortunately, this is not. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if it's unfortunately or fortunately. Or sh- <laughs> whatever, <laughs> however you want to take it, you know, <laughs> up to interpretation at this point. Right. Um, but basically, we've just received a lot of good feedback from people in person and, I don't know, through messages um, who have said that they've listened to our podcast show and they've enjoyed it uh, to, you know, the small number of listeners out there if you haven't um let us know that you're tuning in please do we really enjoy the feedback that we're getting from people so we'd love to hear from you yes don't be a stranger a creeper a little gray (laughs) icon (laughs) follow us on instagram reach out to us dm us whether that's to talk shit or criticize (laughs) whatever it is we are down for it but mary tell us about your week have you done anything crazy fun I am in a good place to say that I've just finished my third book for the year. Update on my whoop, personal whoop. goals. <laughs> oh, yeah, our, our yearly goals. Yeah, so year. she is on track. Yes, and I plan to finish maybe about a third of my uh, fourth book in the next couple of days. So hopefully, you know, so just to push myself on track because we're in the third month and I said I'd read about 15 books, but I'm only – three in if that makes any sense so I'm still Mm. a couple of books behind but that should be fine I hope I can find a book that I get really like into and I can just power through it in like you know two to three days so then it will push my book count up to you know five or six before it hits like the fifth Mm. month so I'm on track but we'll we'll see what we get to like obviously the fact that I've already read three books is an achievement in itself because I don't Mm -hmm. normally read that much I used to but not anymore so I mean it's an achievement so far so I'll I'll keep that (laughs) um the other thing that I have been doing is I think I've already shown you but I bought like a light projector thing from ebay and it like yeah. projects like wave lights or star lights onto walls and i've been putting that onto like the bedroom wall and like playing like like drake songs like emotion in my feel songs you know in the oh my background gosh. and i'm just lying there looking up at my ceiling with these lights and i'm just like i am just you know a higher power right now i'm a higher human being <laughs> I can- she is I am better than everyone else because I have a light projection thing and you don't yeah I'm t- totally in my feels I am spiritual with like sparkles on the side you know? on the side yes yeah. um that's my new thing so that's my new introverted thing where I just spend hours just lying there and listening to in my feels you know in my feels yeah. kind of music with yeah yeah the lights up in the sky but that's that's been my new thing I've been Going back into my inner self this week, being introverted. Mm -hmm. Um, So I haven't really done much that has been, you know, out there or anything like that. But, yeah. What about you, Jess? Um, Well, I guess since you were talking about an update on your goals, I think I I guess I'll give a little bit of an update on mine as well. Yeah. Uh, I have been very consistent, I can say, with going to the gym. We've been on a three to four day streak per week. Like it's not anything crazy, but it's a massive achievement for me considering Mm -hmm. I've been going for a long time, but like I just really, like it was that initial stage that when you first start, it's like you're like really keen because there's something new. Yeah. And then after that, it was kind of like it just dropped off. And then for like a year, I just couldn't get back into the routine. And mm. then COVID hit and it was like another like two years where it was like I could never actually go consistently. Yeah. So I'm really happy with myself that I've been able to like push myself to really go. And I think I figured out why I was I didn't like going, mm. like why, why it was such a chore for me. Yeah. Like. 
I think before a lot of the time I felt like I was doing it for everybody else Yeah, because um, people were pushing me to go and now yeah. I'm going more for myself. Yeah. So it feels a bit more rewarding, but I think yeah. that's something that I would want to elaborate a little bit more on, on a, in a future topic <laughs> that yes. we have saved. So won't go into that too much, but yes, I think so. I'm really proud of myself there. So hopefully I can see some results really, really soon. I know fairy claps, fairy claps. Um, <laughs> and also I went to Supernova this weekend, which was kind of fun, which is like a little convention thing for like geeky, nerdy, weeby stuff, <laughs> which I like, I enjoy going to it every, like, cause it happens every so now and then a few times a year. And I like just going to look at like the artist alleys where they have people like selling like their own drawings and pins and stickers and stuff. So Mm. grabbed a few goodies there so that was kind of fun but yeah that was my my week pretty much nothing too hectic which is kind of like how the way we like it you know yeah sometimes boring is good yeah I that was something I had to learn boring is good so and now yeah. it's like I don't want anything too exciting <laughs> yeah I'm like <laughs> excitement and gross <laughs> disgusting <laughs> That is favorite. a meme. <laughs> oh, no, that is my favorite um, TikTok sound <laughs> slash meme. But that's a really good a follow up into our today's topic. Well, we're going to be talking about a meme series that has been going around since about October last year. And you may or may not have seen this floating in it around on in the internet, mm. and it's the meme called the Feminine Urge Two. Mm -hmm. um so yeah so this is a a meme that kind of talks or reveals some of the unexplained slash unspoken habits that women have and share that we've just kind of like put out into the world and we all secretly laugh together (laughs) because (laughs) our male counterparts just don't seem to understand so we thought we might um you know go through some of the ones that we found on the internet but also we've also made a few of our own just to kind of like comment and talk about yeah so it's going to be an easy breezy ep a bit of a chill one a bit Mm -hmm. bit of laughs and giggles so yeah yeah, let's jump straight into it. Radio. So the first one that is on our list is the feminine urge to lay in bed wrapped in a towel for hours after a shower. Now, I don't know about you, but I like me some of those self Sunday care showers, you know, the ones where you put that a little bit extra time into yep. your shower routine. I'm talking yep. like exfoliation, moisturizing, I know. Body, <laughs> like hair masks, yeah. face masks, all the kind of masks. <laughs> Like you know herself a DIY spa. Yep. And then after that, you lie in your bed, one towel wrapped up around your hair and the other one wrapped up around your body and you just lie there flat on your phone <laughs> scrolling mm-hmm. through Instagram. Literally. <laughs> it's honestly a self-care routine and I'm, I'm so guilty of doing that, like lying in my bed, like with my towel wrapped up, like even just on the weekdays. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know about you, but I get really sleepy after I shower. I'm like one yeah. of those people. But it's yeah. also probably because I take showers in like 50 degrees kind of water. <laughs> I think that's also another feminine urge. <laughs> no, the feminine urge to shower with like like 60 degrees water and your partner's like literally burning. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I don't understand. I, You're boiling me. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I don't know why like we have such hot showers or the fact that we lie in our bed after a shower. Like, I don't it's know. It's comfortable. Yeah, but, but like relaxing. <laughs> it's like it's like why can't you just put your clothes on and then do that? Like your PJs on and then do that. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't know where this came from. It's like a, it's just unspoken just thing. <laughs> yeah, and other females do it too. So it's like I'm not the only one. It's just like a unit. There must be some sort of like gene combo in our in our <laughs> genetic makeup that just says lie down in in your bed with your towel after a shower. I genuinely thought I was the only one that freaking did that. I know, and I always get told off by my mum because it's like an Asian thing where it's like yeah. you're not supposed to like sleep with your hair yeah. like wet or yeah. wrapped up in a towel. Yeah. She always tells me off, and I'm like, I'm a grown woman now. Let me live my life. <laughs> Another one is to spend six dollars on a silly latte every time you set foot outside. <laughs> a silly little latte. <laughs> 
but the, the like, cup has to be aesthetic so you can take an Instagram photo. I know, an Instagram photo. I know. It's actually, I think it's like, you know how in America, like Starbucks is like really big. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like that, but because I think Melbourne has a really like a strong, like a coffee culture. It's mm. like, it's just like, you have to have a coffee in your hand. Like when you leave the house, it's just like, <laughs> it's just part of the outfit at this point, you know, it's like, you don't leave the house without a bag. Right. So you wouldn't walk on the street without your latte cup. Okay. <laughs> it's a crime. It's a fashion crime. People will judge you. You know what's And really you funny. are paying top dollar for it. <laughs> It's funny because I have a keep cup. Like I have a lot of those coffee takeaway cups mm. like that you can reuse, right? But yeah. for some reason, I never take it with me, even though it's an accessory, quote unquote accessory. But then you go and spend that stupid $6 on the coffee just because. Like, like just, the, the sense, like why? logic, none, none, no logic. Material just girl. <laughs> <laughs> Material girl, that's why. That's a good segue onto the next one, Jess, because I think you do this one. <laughs> um, yeah. So the next one is to have a three drinks at all times, one for enjoyment, one for energy and one for hydration. <laughs> and I'm like, definitely like guilty of that. I'm a terrible water drinker though. I have to like admit, like I literally, I could survive on like no water, I swear to God, but like, I'll have like, I always have to have coffee. Mm. And I'll usually have like, yeah, a drink for enjoyment. So I was like, maybe like a milk tea or like, or like a, like a juice or just like, just something for enjoyment. And then I should probably add that, that third drink of water. (laughs) (laughs) It's like a holy trinity, you know? Yeah. For me, it's always two. It's coffee or one for enjoyment and then water. Water is like a necessity. It's like, Mm. it's like, you know. It really is. For me, it's like, I always have to have at least one bottle of water somewhere. So I have like a thousand reusable bottles everywhere. <laughs> oh my God. That reminds me of another one. The feminine urge to buy water bottles. <laughs> oh, cute cups. <laughs> oh, cute cups. <laughs> it's like, I already have like 30 cute cups, but oh my God, this special one will totally like finish my collection. <laughs> and then you've already got like 50 at home. Like why the hell do you need another one for? <laughs> I know that you don't use. Literally, every time Starbucks drops one of those, like, um, those new collections or lines yeah. like I need it I have to have it <laughs> I'm sorry but I think I, we're both still salty about the fact that line friends sold out in like zero seconds. like two seconds I know <laughs> I was like what I literally went like one day after and they're like I'm sorry it's um sold out like everywhere and I'm like <gasps> how would you, why would you set yourself up for failure <laughs> like why would you not produce more like like mass produce more stuff <sighs> Exactly. I was about, I was going to voluntarily give you my money for this overpriced cup with a bear on it. Yeah. <laughs> and you decided to not take you it. You could have charged me $50 for this cup and I would have been like, I'll take seven. Right. I know, and, literally. And the audacity for you to not like supply enough. How I just can't believe it, Starbucks. I know. You had I know. a chance. Who's you your supply a- manager? <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. <laughs> Please plan yeah. your merchandise stock better. You really didn't think this one through, did you? <laughs> All the Asian girls in Australia are deeply disappointed. <laughs> the next feminine urge on our list is to have, well, the feminine urge to have a leg or an arm raised, like when you're just sitting there yeah. <laughs> or lying there. Yeah. I do that all the time. That is something that I, I don't know why I do it. I yeah, just, it's just comfy. Like just to like, you know, just just have it like hanging there like that. <laughs> and there's something about it. It's like weird because, like, logically speaking, right? You're holding up weight, so it would technically be tiring. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like that. No, it like, doesn't. Why? Why is there like a physics answer to this? I'm sure somebody <laughs> somewhere knows the answer. As Someone, to why. if you're a biologist of some sort or some sort of a doctor or a psychologist, please reach out and let let us know um, why I know. we just raise one arm or one leg like yeah just it's as you're like lying actually, there <laughs> and it's like I saw it on like the internet for the first time and I was like oh so it wasn't just me like I literally thought like I've, obviously I only do this like when I'm like alone like by myself so I know, it's like I, I do it <laughs> oh really you just like do it in front of your partner like, yeah all the time all the time I even, like anyway. the reason why this even came up was when we were at the holiday house I just sat there with my arm up and you're just like the feminine urge to put your arm up and that's when <laughs> I discovered that I was the only one that I wasn't the only one that like did that so 
I it's don't just know. Like a, it's like a subconscious habit in a way, right? Like you just like get comfortable and then you just like, you just put your hand up yeah. and that's it. Yeah. That's it. You're just like, you don't even think about it. It just happens. Yeah. It's an automatic response. <laughs> Um, one of our next ones is the feminine urge to compliment random girls at the club toilets. <laughs> like, this is such a funny one because I swear to God, there's so many memes about like girls, like being in the toilet, like, oh my God, babe, I love your makeup or I love your dress. Like <laughs> we say we're going to the toilet, but we're really in there like shit talking with like 30 other girls going you don't need her babe like you are better than that there's plenty of fish in the sea <laughs> and you don't even know this bitch you like met her like two seconds ago at the club and she's just crying having mental a mental breakdown yeah in the bathroom and about like a text message or something that they've received from their ex or something like they've just they're actually there at the club to make their ex jealous and they've posted an insta story with them you know like cuddled up to a guy just to get his attention and they're just in the bathroom like having a like intervention in the middle of the bathroom i know i just and you just feel the need to join in <laughs> Like why? For me, I don't know. <laughs> for me, I, know. I, I, you know, I, I don't put myself in that situation, but I have witnessed it happen, and I just, I just want to pee, guys. Like, can, can you, you know, is it full or is it not full? Like, I just, <laughs> I just need this just, bathroom stall. I just need this release, girl. I <laughs> just need to release. um I'm definitely guilty of this I'm more of a like when I drink and stuff I do get a bit more like chatty and bubbly so I I'm definitely guilty of going in there and like going or just going to a random girl like oh my god your dress is so cute like (laughs) where did you get it from like you look so hot today right she's like no bitch stop like you look hot and it's just a back and forth like no bitch no you no you oh my god follow me on Instagram like oh my god the next day you're just like uh, the fuck is this <laughs> and why did I follow them? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know you. Who are you? Sorry. <laughs> Guys think we go to the club and we end up with some girl, with some guy the next day in his bed, but it's actually we just follow random people on oh, I know on Instagram after going to the toilet. It's it's really it's funny. It's really funny. Um another one that uh is a feminine urge is to ask your partner if they love you and get you, you get upset when they say they don't say anything like they just don't say something that you want to hear oh yeah they don't give you the answer you want to hear it's like that one that it's like where you ask your partner like babe if I was a worm like would you like love me like would you still be with me and then they'll be like what the fuck no like I can't date a worm you're like holy shit you're only with me for my looks <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> the logic behind that it makes no you know, sense like, but I can relate but, but, <laughs> so oh, yeah, but also like why wouldn't you love me if I was a worm like I would still be me like duh <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny but I, I can know. agree am I the drama <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um Another one is, I think I can relate to this one, is to say that it's okay or it's fine, but it's not really fine. Like, it's like, literally, I'm it's stressed like that- out and the house is on fire and I'm just like, and you're just it's like, fine. you're like to me, are you okay? Do you need help? I'm like, no, it's fine. Everything is fine. No, I'm fine. It's all fine. <laughs> and there's literally <laughs> tears like streaming down your face. You're like, yeah. How am I crying? That's fine. You're crying. I'm not crying. I know. Why are you crying? What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Um, That kind of like falls back to kind of like how like people or maybe just women in general, like they don't want to like share their burdens or their problems with other people. Like they just want to like deal with it themselves. Yeah. I think for my, for me, I think it's more stems from the fact that This is another urge that we can talk about later. But men generally, when you do vent to them, they always offer a solution and you don't want a solution. Like, yeah, you know, um, like you just want to vent to someone essentially, basically. So like what you want to do is you like you don't you say it's fine because you don't want to talk about it, because if you talk about it, someone's going to offer you a solution that you don't want. Like it's unsolicited advice. And so for me, when I say I'm fine, it's fine. It's because I don't want to talk about it right now. Mm. You know, I don't want I don't want to open the door for you to give me advice that I don't want to hear or advice that I might already know. Yeah. Yeah. So Mm. 
um, and it stems from the masculine urge to offer your girlfriend a solution to every problem. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually so true, though. Like, I just feel like maybe, okay, maybe oh, I'm just attacking, like, the male, <laughs> just the entire half of the, like, another whole the half of the world. But, you know, I just feel like, yeah, like, men just love to give solutions. I'm like, I don't, I already know this is stupid and I should be crying about it, but I just need to cry. Like, can you just yeah. let me cry? It's like when you're talking about work and how stressful it is and then they're just like, just don't do it. I was like, what? That's not, <laughs> that's, that's not, not going to solve, <laughs> it's not going to yeah, solve my not. problem. Okay. Yeah. No, it's like, yeah. When I tell like, sometimes I go like, oh, this person was like really mean to me or like, just like treated me really rude me. And he was like, yeah, yeah just help to fuck off. Just, <laughs> just ignore her. I'm like, oh, hello. Like, I can't just do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like the mum, the person is your mum. And it's like, yeah, like, just tell me to fuck off. <laughs> really? <What? laughs> Is that really how it works? Your your solutions don't fix it. You, I just I just want to vent. Let me vent, okay? I <laughs> know. Oh just let me vent, girl. Just let me vent. Um, what's another one, Jess? Another oh, urge. the feminine uh, urge to change your hair after a breakup. <laughs> I've done that. It's like you're like so many means where it's like okay, like we've broken up and now I need to go blonde. <laughs> that. I can guarantee you that it was literally me. Like after my last breakup, I went and decided to turn blonde, but then I actually turned blonde when I ended up in my current relationship. So like I was like three months into this relationship and I was like, you know what? I'm feeling a little bit wild. I'm going to go <laughs> blonde. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to, you're going to get a new girlfriend. <laughs> Congratulations. Your monthly subscription had to end. <laughs> You've gone from, you know, <laughs> girlfriend and you've downgraded, <laughs> downgraded to, to, to ABG, <laughs> no, to ABG, <laughs> to ABG ho. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I do that. I feel like it's like refreshing. Like a it's, ref- it's, it's like a symbol of like confidence, starting a new chapter in your life. You know, like that, all, <laughs> it's like that like meme of like Taylor Swift going like oh she can't come to the farm right now because she's dead that's what, like that's what you're doing <laughs> yeah you're you're killing your previous self by by killing your hair <laughs> and bleaching it <laughs> that's a good segue into another one which is buying a new diary or a planner every time a new life phase hits for example when you start a new job like I'm 100% guilty of doing that because I'm just like oh my God, it's a new job. Therefore I need to have a new bag, a new diary, <laughs> you know, a new drink I bottle. I need everything. <laughs> I know. I just have to, I have to have a new everything to like go with this new life that I'm, yeah. I'm starting. <laughs> they say dress the part and I am. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh um, another one that's really relevant to me is the feminine urge to like bite and pinch when mm. you like think something's like really cute. Or like yeah. you really like love something. Like I do this to my partner like all the time and he really hates it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, he, he, I, he, call, he calls it abuse and I'm like, is this affection? <laughs> I think it's called cute aggression. It's is like, it is it actually is there actually a name for this? Cute aggression is like when you see something cute and you just want to pinch it or bite it. Yeah. Or yeah, bite like, it. yeah, like I do it to to puppies and babies. Mm. it's cute mm. aggression. And to babies when you're just like you just like you just want to like squish their cheeks yeah yeah cute aggression mm. yeah we should like, uh, we should do a, a whole episode on this <laughs> on cute aggression yeah <laughs> things that make me want to like bite them <laughs> <laughs> pretty much i literally just like i'll be lying in bed with my partner we'll be just like watching like a tv like or something yeah. and then i don't know i'll just like grab his arm and i'll just like bite it like it's a drumstick <laughs> And it's like, I have to leave like a little bit of a bite mark for it to be satisfying. Oh my goodness. And I can just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'll be like, you're welcome. <laughs> the next one that we have on our list is to play dumb. And in brackets. Strategically. Strategically. <laughs> I, I, I definitely think I do relate to this one because sometimes it's like you play dumb to see where people like what people do in that mm. situation. Um, mm. I don't know. I, I do it strategically because I'm like. It's a sussing strategy, you know. Yeah. We're, like, we're trying to gauge what we're working with. Yeah. 
like a lot of people like especially at work I know people know that I know what I'm doing but sometimes I just play dumb just to like to like offload the responsibility yeah yeah. Yeah. (laughs) to deflect the responsibility because if you I don't know (laughs) <laughs> yeah if you say you do know then you have to like do it right yeah so you have to you put your it, input into it and you're just like it. sorry i don't know maybe you should yeah. ask jesse <laughs> just Who so also <laughs> doesn't fucking know i don't know anything i'm just a small potato oh no look at me maybe you just um, gotta do it yourself sorry <laughs> i know i'm happy for you to do it yourself though <laughs> <laughs> how to professionally say fuck off <laughs> Yeah, how to literally, how to say no. (laughs) I'm going to let you introduce the next one, Jess, because this seems Um, to be right down your alley. I know. (laughs) The the feminine urge should be a highly educated trophy wife with the ability to earn my own money, but no need to. (laughs) <laughs> so I was, I was like talking about this with my partner and he, I, he didn't really understand this concept. Mm. So I think the first thing I want to do is explain or read what Wikipedia has <laughs> for the definition of what a trophy wife is. This is the so disclaimer. Then, She's reading it from Wikipedia. I know, from Wik- I know, disclaimer. This is from <laughs> Wikipedia. So in no way, shape or form is this, like it might be like grammatically slash correct like whatever correct but it also might not be (laughs) it's just up to interpretation but essentially it's a wife who was regarded as a status of symbol a status symbol for their husband and it's often used in a more derogatory or a negative way implying that the wife is only good for their physical attractiveness and actually doesn't really have any personal merits yeah. so basically it's kind of like like a sh- I think like a modern day term for trophy wife is like a sugar baby yeah like she doesn't really provide anything to her husband besides the yeah. fact that she's like hot yeah yeah <laughs> like he gets to flex that he the girlfriend that he has or whatever is hot so um I think it's like it's like a, the whole idea is just the concept of not having to do anything and have having everything given to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like have- that the idea, the concept. Sorry, excuse me. The concept is really nice. Like it's nice to not have to work. You know what I mean? Like mm. I think for me, I I do like that is an urge that I want, but. I think I would get bored, so I'd have to at least work part time if I were, if yeah. I was to get there. But that's what, but see the, <laughs> the the key from this take the takeaway from this is the ability to earn my own money, but yeah. I don't need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like we've always had this like you know like when work just gets like hard or like you're just freaking tired and you mm-hmm. just go, that's it. I'm just gonna get a sugar daddy. <laughs> I don't want to get this bread no more. <laughs> I'm doing that's every it. day. I'm- <laughs> I know literally every day at the end of the day I'm like I'm doing it I'm never coming back I'm quitting my job I'm getting a sugar daddy you'll never <laughs> see me again that's me every time there's like the so minor inconvenience <laughs> yeah a minor inconvenience but also when their lottery is like on a Thursday what's it called I know. it's the this the powerball the, it's like the power you know, ball test anything lottery. that's like 20 million dollars and above I'm like single-handedly like single-handedly like funding that person, that person who wins the jackpot. That's my money, girl. You owe me. <laughs> Legit. You owe me that money. Okay. I'm here trying to pave my way out of having to work so I can be a trophy wife with the ability to earn my own money, but don't need to. <laughs> I know. Like, sign me up. Where can I, where can I put my name down, girl? <laughs> Um, another one that I think a lot of females do is the, the female, the feminine urge to reject everybody and then complain about being single. Mm-hmm. I think I was like that when I was younger, but then also, I mean, it's like rejecting everyone because obviously they don't fit. Like, I don't know why that's a negative connotation. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, like- but it's like, also like some, there are some women that I think, I think, well, I, I see like online where people like have really unrealistic and high expectations. Yeah. And then anytime, even anyone remotely decent, like comes up to them, they're just like, no. And then be like, oh my God, nobody likes me. Like, why can't I find a boyfriend? And then as soon as anyone tries to approach him, like not even giving people a chance and just yeah. going, no. And then, but also why am I single? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that 
reminds me of another one that's also really relevant that girls do is that like when you like somebody like the feminine urge to like look up your compatibility like yeah. on, you know, via horoscopes <laughs> yeah yeah not us, us <laughs> after that F- last episode about that in return <laughs> It's not even just that. It's not even about the crush. I do it to all my friends as well. I'm like, yeah. when we met Fab, I was like, if we're vibing, does that mean you're a Pisces? <laughs> <laughs> What's your star is- sign? What's your star sign? There <laughs> has to be a logical explanation for all of this. I'm going to guess. You're a Scorpio, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like, Me <literally>, sitting there <laughs> guessing people's star signs I'm based off like how I vibe with them. I'm like, I, know. I don't like you, therefore you're an Aries. Am I right? And they're like, yes. <laughs> how did you know? I just know. <laughs> I just know. I think I remember like back in like primary school, there was like this way to like work out if somebody was compatible or not with you. Yeah. By, I think it was like your birthday. No, it or wasn't even name? that. Isn't that that drawing game where you type in like BLT or something like that and then you cross yeah, out yeah, and you yeah. count numbers or something? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Something like that. I can't remember specifically, but it was like shit like that where it's like you just, it's like stupid shit that doesn't make any sense. But it's like, I just want to do it. I just want to know if we're compatible or not. <laughs> when she when she asks you for your horoscope, run, girl, run. No, or like for your birthday or something, <laughs> run, bitch, run. <laughs> she is coming for you. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, another one of on our list is. Uh, to call everyone around you, babe or honey or sweetie. I don't know. I what about? Do you relate to this one? Because I don't think I call everyone babe, but I have met people who who do that. Yeah, who do that, and I'm not comfortable mm. with it. I'm like, I don't have a relationship with you, so like, don't. <laughs> can, can you like mm, not? <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think I have been guilty. I think I went through a phase in my life where yeah. I did that. When 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 younger Jesse was more extroverted, I think I definitely went around calling everyone babe. Yeah. Which I, which annoys me now that I think about it. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> yeah, I also agree with you. It's like don't don't like pretend like we're super close. Yeah. <laughs> even if we've just met. I think if you're like, if it's like honey or something like it's like, oh that's okay, honey. Like if you're like, you know. I, I feel like that's like an older lady saying it to a younger girl, mm. like in a casual situation, it's okay. But babe is really intimate to me. Like I feel really awkward. I'm like, Ugh. I don't even, sometimes I don't even don't call you babe. Like I'm like. No, I don't think we call it. No, we don't call each other like. Very babe. rarely. Like very rarely. It's like, thanks really? babe. Really? Or boo. Like. Oh. I've called you boo before. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it's like a real, like, casual kind of slip, but usually you, like, call me, like, Jess and I'll call you, like, Mez. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I don't know. It's, like, it's or B. B is oh, for yeah. short. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, B. Yeah. Thanks, B. But it's, yeah. like, it's, it's. I don't know. It's, for me, it's because I call my partner babe, and so I don't want to put anyone else on the same pedestal. Mm. So I'm like, don't call me that because that's just weird. <laughs> like, I also know guys that do that too, actually, now that I think about it. I know yeah. there are some guys that just call, like, all his, like, girlfriends, like, friends that are female, like, babe. Yeah, yeah. Is that a fuckboy tendency? I don't know. Is that a masculine <laughs> urge or is that a fuckboy urge? It, I don't know. Some, any male out there that calls everyone babe, please let us know. <laughs> And if you don't call them beige, what do you what, what do you call them? That's an alternative word. Like, what's an alternative word? Is it B? Yeah. yeah. Is it B? Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> Let us know. Um, another one is the one I actually do a lot is the feminine urge to finish every sentence with the phrase "if that makes sense." I do that all the time. That is that is especially like- at work. Yeah. I always like if I'm like teaching someone something. Like after all, everything, even if I try to be very thorough with my explanations and then mm. I'll be like, if that makes sense. Or like when you're giving somebody is- instructions. Yeah. I'd be like, so can you do it like this, 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 and this? Like, does that make sense? Like, do you get what I'm trying to say? <laughs> I'm going to try and explain this one, right? I think it's the turbulent personality trait. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Because you're, you're like second guessing what you've said, mm. even though you know very well, you've explained it well. Yeah. Like you're confident in your answer, but then you're not confident at the same time. And that for me, my, if that makes sense is me being like, 
just double checking like, for yeah, like doubting your it's in yeah. a way it's a doubt doubting your own explanation but yeah it's, but it's also like a way for me to give the other person an opportunity to speak up if they don't understand yeah inviting them for questions yeah to 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 question it because sometimes like it can be really intimidating when someone goes like like explaining to you something and then they just finish it off there and go yeah cool and then it's like oh like you expect me to just understand that yeah there was no segue for me to possibly question or or say or voice that I I actually didn't understand yeah so I I do I do agree with you it's that turbulent uh, personality trait inside me questioning yeah. myself but yeah. it's also me wanting to create a, a safe space yeah. <laughs> for people I'm, to like <laughs> I'm gonna to plug us I'm gonna plug us right now if you don't know what turbulent personality traits are please listen to our Maya Briggs episode and you'll understand because yes. we go into depth with what that means but mm-hmm. um it makes I just had a thought, right? So that sentence, if that makes sense on the end that you just throw onto the end of a sentence, Mm. right? Kind of reminds me of the um, sentence, no offense. And then you go into saying something offensive. Offensive. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, why do we do that? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, Mm. I, I don't quite understand why we do that. I think there is a terminology for that kind of sentence, but I don't know what it's called what and that, I'd really yeah I really would like to look further into that so maybe yeah. I can come back next week with an update with an answer mm. yeah on what that kind of sentence is because I'd, yeah. I'd like to know <laughs> and that also reminds me like I also do this when I'm like talking about my feelings yeah like if I'm trying to explain my feelings or something to somebody like let's say we've had a disagreement or something and yeah. I'm trying to explain my point of view yeah. I usually I always I tend to say like yeah like if that makes sense like yeah. like do you understand where I'm where I'm coming from yeah yeah, yeah. it's like another tur- like a turbulent thing yeah um oh, this is interesting like I think it's just like it's the constant need to I guess get some sort of a approval like validation yeah like that's the word validation Mm. for the things that you've said I don't know it's yeah so even I don't know like is that something you understand like see that like that's me right now even being like hey here's my uh you know opinion do you get what I'm saying like but like yeah like I'm not trying to like you know come off you know what I mean do you know what I mean you know what I mean (laughs) you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying (laughs) yeah anyways what what else is on our list? Oh, uh, I think this one's one that we always like <laughs> giggle about. <laughs> it's wanting to be spoiled. So it's that 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 meme that's like wanting to get flowers but not wanting to tell someone that you want flowers because you want them to want to buy you flowers, not because you told them that you want flowers. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Do you get if that makes sense? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> and like you like I'm, I'm sure that like 99.9 percent of all the females listening right now will be like yes girl like I know exactly what you're talking about yeah and all the and any men listening would be like all I heard was flowers <laughs> <laughs> like what I just heard a flowers like 10 times yeah they just we okay we're gonna say it out right now I'm gonna be the feminist leader you know, face of the feminine community to say right now, this. yes, we do want flowers, but we don't want to tell you that we want them. We just want you to get them, but don't get them on Valentine's day because society says that you have to get them on Valentine's day, get them every other day, you know? but Valentine's day, but also get it on Valentine's day if you want to, you know, you can if you want to, but not because society wants you to, but because you want to. <laughs> Okay. To okay. make it more, you know, <laughs> more confusing for everybody else. <laughs> it's just a feminine urge, okay? <laughs> it's just a feminine urge. Like, just get with it and buy me flowers, okay? Cool story. <laughs> this talk. is also lead a good segue into the next one, which is saying I don't mind, but then saying no to everything that he suggests. Like, that <laughs> is just the biggest feminine urge, is that not? Like, he's like, oh, what do you want to eat? And then I don't you're mind, like, babe. Hey, Anything. Mind, you pick. And he's like, pizza? And you're like, no. McDonald's? No. <laughs> no. Kebabs? No. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> do you want? <laughs> Anything. And Anything then insert, that you just listed. 
insert the notebook quote. It's not that simple. It's not that simple, if that makes sense. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. (laughs) It's like, it's like you don't know what you want, right? So you say you don't mind, but then when you're, the options are like given to you, it's kind of like, you like, kind of like feel it. You think about it and you're like, no, I don't really feel that, but I also don't know what I want. <laughs> so you can keep, <laughs> keep listing out the questions. Yeah. I think I saw, I think online, there was like a trick or something that, that people like use or something mm. where where, where if like your girl you ask your girlfriend like where you want to eat mm. and then she goes I don't mind mm. you I can't, what was the answer it was like something along the lines of you tell like you give her two options and then mm. you like make her pick yeah I have to oh, now this is annoying me because it's just like remind I've been just reminded of this and it, it's like really <laughs> it was really smart it was a really smart way of like dealing with that and I was like oh, you like kind of like mind fucked me like you yeah. made me answer my own questions like I like that <laughs> <laughs> now well, I need to go find that answer why don't you note it down and then after the episode we'll share that on our stories so you got to be on yeah. our Instagram stories to know what the hell's going on okay yeah. Note that down. All the just. men out there, all the <laughs> men out there that need to figure out how to decide where to eat, like you can go <laughs> into the story and I'll tell you. Mm. That's another one that we do as well is listening or singing, listening or singing to break up or slash host songs in front of your man, despite being in a long-term happy relationship. Like there's this TikTok that I remember and it's one girl just singing like, I think it was like We Belong Together or Don't Forget About Us by Mariah Carey mm. at the top of her lungs. And they're both in the car and her man's in like, you know, the driver's seat and he's just like looking at her like, oh, my what God, like the... who broke your heart or something. I know. <laughs> who, what? who hurt you, girl? Who hurt you? <laughs> he's like, she wants to get back with him, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Not me listening to Drake at the top of my lungs with the waves and being in my feels, even though I've been in with my partner for like three years. Yeah, literally. <laughs> or like singing um like Ariana Grande. Yeah. Break up with your girlfriend. I know. Cause I'm bored. <laughs> he's like, oh shit. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> that feminine urge. I know. Sometimes like you just want to like fantasize being a single bad bitch hoe. Yeah. But you also don't want to commit to that single bad bitch her life because what you have is good, but we're just going to temporarily live it out, you know, in that three minute song. Sometimes, you know, the song is just so vibey. You have to put yourself in that, those shoes. Yeah. Like, like you were in that stage in your life at yeah, some point. Yeah. How can you sing to Olivia Rodrigo's songs and not put yourself in that situation? Know. You know, okay. you, like, <laughs> you look happy and healthy, not me. <laughs> that song is so freaking funny. I fucking love that song. <laughs> I mean, like, how can I sing that and not think about, you know, the the time that I felt like that? Like, yeah, I know. Like, good for you. (laughs) What's some other random urges that we have that aren't feminine that we wanted to list? Oh, yes. I think (laughs) this one's like the Asian urge to slap bags of rice or fruit at the supermarket. (laughs) I think like a lot of uh, Asians can relate to this, like just seeing like old Asian grandmas like slapping watermelons and stuff. Yeah, I don't know what the the technique is behind that, but I don't know. It seems to be working for her. <laughs> but I don't know, man. I was never taught this, so even now when I go to pick fruit, I'm like, how do I know if it's sweet I, or not? I, just I have to have, Google I just it. Like, I know, or like, or I use you kind of slap it like to hear like the noise. Yeah, like if it sounds like hollow or not, like if it sounds yeah. full. Yeah, but then the bag of rice thing, like it doesn't make any sense. It's like, why do I need to slap a bag of rice? I don't know, but I, I, I find myself doing that when I'm. It's at just the Asian- satisfying. Like you just like you just slap it like a fat, a fat, <laughs> fat ass. ass. <laughs> 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 Yeah. When, nobody, when nobody taps your ass so you gotta fulfill it now. it's like that meme where it's like nobody you slap that bag of rice <laughs> oh. oh my god I'm like literally crying I'm literally crying 
Oh. Um, another one is the corporate urge to respond with, as per my previous email. <laughs> Every aggressively <laughs> as per my previous email <laughs> I have a lot of corporate urges okay I know I'm <laughs> saving that for another day <laughs> yeah that's definitely a whole other episode in itself <laughs> and then to our you know masculine counterpart we just wanted to wrap this up and just say the masculine urge to offer your girlfriend a solution like I mentioned before um or the other masculine urge is to say that you're okay, but then randomly punch a wall, like, at a minor convenient inconvenience. Like, <laughs> Just men bottling you, up their feelings. Why are you guys so aggressive? Why are you going to go punch a wall for or throw something aggressively? Like, I don't understand. Someone please, you know, go into the comments in our Instagram and just let us know. Hit our DMs. Let us know why i know we we females we need answers yeah i want to know why you have this masculine urge to just throw shit or like punch the wall you know um but anyways that is literally all we have time for today so if you've got any other feminine urges or if you have some masculine urges or non-binary urges to share we would love to hear from you so reach out to us on our instagram page at messyminds.podcast and that's messy with an ie If you're enjoying our show, please give us a rate and a review on whatever platform that you're tuning in on. Be sure to come back next week for some more juicy, juicy content. Until next time, this is Jessie. And this is Mary. And don't forget to declutter your messy minds. Bye. Bye.